In the 23rd chapter of Proverbs, verses 1 and 2, the Bible states, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Now that sounds pretty serious when you consider the word appetite. It is the Hebrew word nefesh, which is often translated as creature, life, or soul in the Bible. When the Bible speaks of soul, it's referring to breath. Is the Bible saying that a man should put a knife to his throat if he eats something that is a creature with breath, a.k.a. a soul? Well, welcome to From Sickness to Health. I'm Rico Hill, your host, and this is my co-host, the blue guy, Sickness. And today, I guarantee you, he is not going to enjoy the topic that we have, because we're talking about soul food. And I guarantee you, I love soul food. Because I got plenty of soul, brother man. Okay, you shouldn't even talk like that. I love me some soul food. I like fried chicken. Let's see, we got neck bones with gravy, smothered chicken, and chitterlings. It's pronounced chitlins. Chitlins and gravy, cornbread, catfish, and colored greens. Now you're way off. It's collard greens. No, no, no. It's colored greens. See, you put some pig feet in there and some ham hock and then some red hot sauce and they become colored greens. Well, the Bible says that any man who does all of that should take a knife and put it to his throat. Well then, you better get millions of knives for all of my friends who love soul food. And you're going to need some forks and some hot sauce because we ain't giving up tradition. Well, Today, stick around, we're going to avoid all the knives all together because we're going to dig into this subject of soul food. Preach, brother man. Roll it. Thank you for joining us here in the studio of From Sickness to Health. I'm your host, as you know, and today we have a lively discussion for you. But before we get into this discussion about soul food, I want you to say hello once again to our co-host of sorts, Sickness, the blue guy. He's at a remote location. And uh, say hello to the folks. Hello, everyone. All right. He's going to go and he's going to stir up something. I think he's got something cooking up at another location. So we're going to say bye to him. But we want to say hello to our in-studio guest we have with us today, Dr. Yvonne Lewis, who is a naturopathic doctor. She's also the general manager of Dare to Dream Network. And she joins us today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having Next me. Next to her is Dr. Thomas Jackson, a friend, a mentor of mine. And he is a doctor of natural health sciences. And he is also the director of Meat Ministry in Huntington, Tennessee. Welcome to the program today. Thank you. Along with him by his side, his bride by his side, All as he right. likes to say, <laughs> is Dr. Laverne Jackson, who is also a doctor in her own right. She is a doctor of, um, what is it? Nutritional, Nutritional sciences. Science. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nutritional sciences. So we're going to talk about all these wonderful things as it relates to soul food. Mm. Soul food, something that has come to us through tradition. Tradition, why? Because it's come through the transatlantic slave trade. As it came down through the, through the ages, it has evolved into something that really has been doing a lot of damage and causing quite a bit of sickness and disease to our people. So today we want to get into it and we want to dispel some of the myths, some of the misunderstandings, some of the misconceptions as mm -hmm. it relates to soul food. Mm -hmm. That's right. I know you guys are dying to jump in, <laughs> but hold on a second. We want to be fair and balanced and we want to give mm -hmm. sickness an opportunity to kind of show us what uh, he's been working with in his own perspective on soul food. Mm. Let's take a look. Hello, Rico. I'm in a soul food restaurant where science is showing that a lot of these things can lead to sickness. So needless to say, this is one of my favorite places. Now take your typical kitchen. 
where you can find dangerous things like toxic chemicals, nasty bacteria, or even some of your vegan nut loaf. Now these things are dangerous, trust me. But there is something even more dangerous than those. That is tradition. And tradition is a dangerous thing. It can harm religion, diet, food. I mean, it'll hurt your body and your soul. And on that note, let's take soul food. You see, soul food is high in fat, high in salt, high in calories, high in sugar. It leads to high medical bills, okay? And it's just dangerous stuff. And what a lot of people don't know is, it's been passed down from one of the worst evils in United States history, slavery. Now, I know many people celebrate a great Sunday tradition every week, getting together, eating some soul food. It's killing them. And hey, it's bad for them, but good for sickness. So you can see where I'm at on this issue. But hey, back to you, Rico. Pass the salt and the hot sauce. Yeah, yummy, this is gonna be good. Well, now you can see we've got a problem, don't we? <laughs> well, let's talk about this. We see the sickness is there at a restaurant and he's had some soul food. Now where, what are we talking about when we're talking about soul food? We saw the fried chicken there. Mm -hmm. We saw, I think I saw some collard greens there, yes. right? There was mm -hmm. some cornbread. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of things there, but what, what are we talking about when we talk about soul food? What is soul food? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was thinking about uh, soul food, the word soul really is a word that was only attached to this particular food in the late 60s. So it's really what we call down home Southern cooking in the rural South, mm -hmm. because the word soul during the rise of the civil rights movement and the black nationalism movement, we had what we call soul brothers and soul sisters. Uh -huh. uh, we had soul music. Uh -huh. And even when I was coming up, we had soul train. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so the word soul was added in order to give some type of identity to the African American culture. But some say in the, probably 1969 there was a, a black civil rights leader or poet by the name of Amira Baraka mm -hmm. that gave it really the nail in the sure place of calling soul food. Mm -hmm. So oh. I just want to deal with that word soul. Now we can move into the area of what does it consist of? Mm -hmm. What does it consist of? Dr. Laverne Jackson, what does it consist of? What's in soul food? Mm -hmm. Sickness said <laughs> fried chicken. Fried chicken? Colored greens, <laughs> now, collard greens. Now, what, he said colored, colored greens. He I just wanted colored. to have some implication there. Well, yeah, yes. Okay. But anyway, colored <laughs> greens, collard greens, sorry. <laughs> then we have macaroni and cheese. Mac and cheese. You have uh, sweet potatoes. There's nothing wrong with sweet potatoes. Nothing is wrong with them, but that was part of the tradition as well. And then some of the least expensive uh, meats, which we uh, maybe need to talk a little bit about. We will. Yes. And yes. we're talking about like chitlins, which is chitlins. what? What is chit What are chitlins? Chitlins. A lot of people oh. don't know what chitlins are. Huh? Worst things in the world you want. But did you used to eat those though? <laughs> no, I didn't eat them. Well, I no. know I used to eat I, those. Oh, well, yeah. 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 It was a tradition. It was a tradition. On coming up for New Year's Day, you had to have some chitlins. It brings good luck, they say. Well, yeah. It we brings some luck. We don't luck, see that with hospital like bills, do we? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting is that when we talk about you, and you said it, you said. The most, the least expensive meats. Yes. We're talking about like chitlins you mentioned. Yes. We're talking about pig feet. That's These right. are not expensive. And and from the traditional standpoint, we're talking about foods during the, the time of slavery mm -hmm. that the, the master did not That's want. Right. That's right. That's right. Right. That's right. And the women who were closely associated with 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 making the meals mm -hmm. of the slaves who were burning about 3,000 calories a day, working all day, right. wow. they had to do something that was economic, something that was in abundance, and they mm -hmm. chose these foods, but why do we still have them today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do tradition. we have them today? It goes back to tradition. Tradition. <laughs> back to tradition. We are stuck in a rut, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and we can't, we, we, we have the sickness to prove it. 
we are the forerunners of disease. Mm. Um, all these different chronic diseases like cancer, like diabetes, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. hypertension, mm -hmm. all of these chronic diseases are in part because of our tradition. Mm -hmm. Can I get a word in? Mm. <laughs> okay. Blue man. Let, let's go. He, he has something to, to comment on here. What, what, what do you have for us? Yeah, on that note, look, it was tradition and soul food that got an entire race of people mm. through some very difficult times. Mm -hmm. Now, all this talk about so it causes diabetes and cancer and high blood pressure, high cholesterol, shortening the life. Oh, that's extreme, my brother, very extreme. <laughs> uh, th thank you for your, your comment, but let's, let's deal with that. Extreme? Mm. Well, tell us what is extreme. What is extreme? I mean, if we're, if we're yeah. saying that, you know, tradition is something that we should uphold even at the expense of mm -hmm. health. 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 That's right. That is extreme, isn't it? Mr. Yes, Blue it might have some things that's true. <laughs> <laughs> However, like you said, the extreme is not extreme when you have a uh, tri, you know, tri bypass, triple bypass. Triple. Uh, it's not extreme when there's, you know, um, clogged arteries and we're talking about embolism. Mm -hmm. It's not extreme when you find those who are being controlled by tradition mm. leading the world within America of breast cancer, of prostate cancer, mm. of high blood pressure. And I can go back to my personal experience because, you know, soul food, as I mentioned, yeah. definitely the word soul is the adjective that describes uh, this tradition that was wrought in slavery and then transitioned here into America in the rural South. But I remember uh, when I was um, clinically diagnosed at the age of 17 with rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. And, and that started from 17 to 27, mm. which stopped my pursuit as a professional basketball player. And I grew up on traditional soul food. Mm -hmm. And so my people had arthritis, blood pressure. And I remember my doctor saying, you know, you, uh, you inherit this condition. And uh, I thought for a moment, it's been over close to 50 some years ago. And he said, you know, there's no known cause for it. There's no remedy for it. You have to live with it for the rest of your life. But when I began to recognize some principles from the Word of God, and especially when you read in the book of Matthew and how the Pharisees held on to their traditions, mm -hmm. and I began to do some research about uh, this tradition, because God also said in Exodus 20 that, you know, you will suffer as results of your forefathers. It's talk about generation curse. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I began to trace my problem. And I remember in that introduction that Proverbs 23, and it talks about, you know, if you're given to appetite, put a mm -hmm. knife to your throat. So my people ate the traditional food, the ham hock. I mean, we could not eat color or collard greens <laughs> <laughs> without ham hocks, mm -hmm. without fat back. That's right. Uh, we will eat not the bacon. I mean, we would actually eat the fat. I mean, the, the fat of the pig and, 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 and cook it in, in the grease, yes. mm -hmm. in the lard that mm -hmm. was reused over, over and, and over Because it would give it flavor. It yes. would give I mean, flavor. It was yes. the taste. Fat brings flavor. Fat being, mm -hmm. brings flavor. It, it gives you fla flavor mm -hmm. to it. Without fat, you know, you don't want that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Without fat, you don't want that. <laughs> yes, yes. No, 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 let's put this in, into perspective. So we're talking about foods that are inexpensive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But they're high in fat. Mm -hmm. They're high in sodium. sodium. Mm -hmm. Correct. They're high in cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, a lot of times, sugar. We talked about the sweet potato. Nothing wrong with the sweet potato. No, it's not. But when you make the sweet potato pie, which I love, by the way, there you go. Mm -hmm. me too. Love it. Yeah. However, when you've got white refined sugar, then it makes for a pro-inflammatory situation, and that's really what we're talking about. That's, that's what we're talking about. about. How does how does the food? affect us physiologically. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. What is it doing to our arteries? What is it doing to our, our bones? He got diagnosed mm -hmm. at 17, mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis. That's right, Correct. autoimmune. Now that's a debilitating disease. Mm -hmm. That's a deforming disease. At 17. At 17. So we see that generationally, talking about tradition, it was passed on. So it wasn't so much what was genetically, Genetic, that's right. it was more about what L lifestyle, was on the plate. lifestyle was on the plate. passed on. That's right. Mm -hmm. From one thing. You were about to say something. We have to begin to make this connection between what we eat 
and how we are faring mm -hmm. physiologically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, these foods, as you mentioned, set up internal conditions that are pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. So then you have the arthritis and the stiffness in the joints. Then you have the clogged arteries. Mm -hmm. And you don't really realize it's because that fat back that comes out of slavery, corn and fat back were the staples mm -hmm. of slavery. Mm -hmm. And it was in everything. That's mm -hmm. where we get the grits from, you know, grinding the, grinding the we grits. We had that this Fish morning. Fish and grits. Fish and grits, right? <laughs> or, you know, I mean, you can take the chicken and grits, you know, mm -hmm. and smother it with the gravy and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. But all of that leads to internal conditions that are disease promoting. Mm -hmm. and and as was mentioned another time, we can turn on that P53 cancer mm -hmm. gene mm -hmm. or turn it off mm -hmm. with food. That's right. Yes. So the mm -hmm. food that we eat mm -hmm. sets us up for illness. And the slaves weren't all well. Right. Mm -hmm. The slaves were sick themselves mm -hmm. with pellagra from all that That's corn, right. mm -hmm. vitamin B deficiencies, mm -hmm. all of those things. So our tradition that we have set up has made us sick. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're that's what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. and, and when we say made us sick, we're talking about in the African American community, mm -hmm. we lead in mm -hmm. almost every single chronic, chronic lifestyle disease. disease. That's that's right. We're talking cancer, we're talking about high heart blood disease. pressure, diabetes, that's right. mm -hmm. we're talking about heart disease. Correct. You know, sometimes Strokes. the first mm. uh, uh, symptom of heart disease is what? Mm. Death, Death, a heart attack, yeah, heart attack. Right. and we're seeing this younger and younger and younger. Mm -hmm. yes. So this is affecting our communities as a result of the foods. Now I want to show a video clip, mm -hmm. and in this video clip it puts it into perspective, mm -hmm. and people are starting to, to wake up, and we really, in this program, we want to really take them to the next level in mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. to have a paradigm shift. So let's take a look at that video mm -hmm. on soul food. Excuse us, sickness, we're going to go for the fried chicken. Hey, it's comfort food. You know, you eat it and it makes you feel better. Good Lord, good meat. Come on, let's eat. Hallelujah. Soul food is a repository for our history. And soul food represents black. At the best moments of the black freedom struggle, when you had organizations like the Black Panthers, they understood the relationship between developing a black nation and having healthy diets. In the nation of Islam, we have referred to a soul food diet as a slave diet. There's so many mythologies that have accreted onto the idea of what black people were eating during the time of slavery. So, if you call it death food, because it will kill you. Hey, how you doing, Green Belt? It's almost like you eat, you get big, you go to college, you get your education, you get your diabetes, you get your high blood pressure, and you die. The most important thing is that people complicate their understanding of what soul food is, because it's easy to say that it's the bane of African American health. The bigger cause of the decline of African American health is the industrialization of our food system. In this supermarket in my neighborhood, I see vegetables that look like they're having a nervous breakdown, and they're asking people the regular price for it. In America, there is a class-based apartheid in the food system. And if you live in low-income communities, there's often very little healthy food. You want to wipe out an entire generation of people when you want to engage in the kind of 21st century genocide, all you have to do is continue to do what we're doing, which is deprive people of access to healthy food. Wow, we have got to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So we See. saw here, this brings in a whole other element. It talks mm -hmm. about in the communities, there's no access That's right. to certain foods. Mm. That's sad. That's a, There's no access. I think they call them food deserts. Food mm. deserts. Mm. Uh, uh, an area where there is no access to healthy, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, produce. Mm. And mm. produce play a huge part of mm. soul food. But I like what the sister says. She says she has seen some vegetables look like they're about to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> and they are breaking down. <laughs> and if they have a nervous breakdown, they have you break down. That's Is correct. that right? That's right. Because they have no nutrients when they when they're like that. That's right. We went into a community once, and we uh, asked, "Where's the the vegetables that are what we call healthy looking? Where are the ones that don't have uh, decay on them?" And the uh, the owner said. This is what we have. And that was it? That was it. You either take this or you leave it. Mm -hmm. So you know what we did? We left we, it. Yeah. You know, there's a thought come to mind, <clears throat> food desert and the accessibility of food. A question just to us, why is it that then within the African community that there's no accessibility to or no provision of these quality foods in the mm. inner cities? 
you know, is there some pathology to that? There's some political, there's something economics. You know, when I was growing up in Chicago, you can tell the difference between uh, African American community and a non African American community by the advertisement on the grocery store. That's right. Mm -hmm. And where we'll find, you know, in the African American community, you had the chitterlings and mm -hmm. you, you have those type of foods, but you move pig to feet. a non, and pig feet, you move to a non African American community, you might just have pork chops. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have chitterlings. Mm -hmm. And so, what is it that create this environment while there's not the food that you find in a non-African American community uh, that has accessible to quality food. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's not in the African American community. Do we have it that so? Is it economics or is it because people have come to the conclusion this is the way African Americans are, the way they want to eat and they don't have any really conscious about taking ownership into their health because mm -hmm. food is just for pleasure as the lady is for pleasure but we never think in terms what it does to our bodies. Right. So you raise a very good question. You're, you're asking the question, is yeah. it the, the, the issue with access, is it because we have been um, uh, perceived as mm -hmm. this is the food that they like? That's right. This that's is what all. we'll sell them. That's right. Or mm -hmm. is, it, is it something else, political? Is it something that's yeah. being withheld? Or, yeah. or is it just, you know, again, coming back to tradition? Tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and, and there seems to be or a need for a paradigm shift right. in yes. our thinking. Yes. And that's what educate, educate, educate. educate. So yes. we, we want to talk a little bit about um, in the time that we have left, because we don't want to just talk about, you know, mm -hmm. it's sickness. It's <laughs> sickness right. and what it, <laughs> what it does to us. What we want to talk about, about how can we begin to continue to have this food? Because again, to the point, Nothing wrong with the collard greens. Nothing, Nothing. Nothing wrong with the uh, uh, the sweet, sweet potatoes, the yams. right? Nothing wrong with the black eyed peas. Black eyed That's peas. correct. Healthy, right? And right. Yeah, I was going to say, in fact, it's not only that there's nothing wrong with it. They are health promoting. Come on. Correct. It's what we do with, with them. them. That's the question. How we prepare That diminishes them. its nutritional value. That's right. Absolutely. Right. That neutralizes. Neutralizes. It. That's mm -hmm. a better word. That's neutralizes right. the nutritional value. So, so okay. Let's just say we're talking directly to people. We're like, okay, hat. We, we, we may have the holidays. We get to the holidays, right? Mm -hmm. and, and people are going to have their collard greens. They're going to have their black eyed peas and so forth. What can they do to still have their greens? Mm. Well, these are the best that there is. Now, how you uh, prepare them is what makes the difference. Okay. We talked about that lard in the can. We do away with that. And we have here, if you look here, mm -hmm on top here, I'm going to just show you this. And this may be something new to the community, mm. but it's called a leek. And leeks are excellent in seasoning of these greens. Instead of using the lard, we can use these. Wait a minute. So when you put lard in the greens, the greens are going to have some fat content. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right? It's yes. going to have some flavor content yes, from the fat. Yes, but you're yes. saying put a vegetable. This probably sounds strange to people. Well, it a does. vegetable in the greens and it's going to have that yes, same? Yes, yes. It's just like when people take uh, garlic, they take their onions and they saute them. Mm -hmm. When you saute them in water, it gives oil from that. So when you saute it, releases it, that it releases oil compound that. that's what naturally oh. within the vegetable itself, the way God intended, intended for it to be. Oh. Now, there's, you can put a little olive oil in there if you would like, but this, if we're talking about sickness, was talking about high blood pressure, mm -hmm. you don't have to have worry about high blood pressure when you use leeks. Mm -hmm. Chop them up. Now, of course, this is high in nutrients, especially your B12. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a root vegetable. And so when you cut this, and then it's going to have some of that dirt that you was made out of. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Substance. And so when you cut it and you wash it real good, then you put, you chop this, and then some of these, the lower part, mm -hmm. put it in there, let it uh, saute in the water, then drop these collard greens down in there. Lovely season. And also, we can use eggplants. So eggplant will actually also produce some of the fat in the... With, mm -hmm. Yes. So you'll have some good fat pot liquor, as That's we right. say. Right? That's and right. When you cut that eggplant and dice it, mm -hmm. it seems like ham hocks floating oh, around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look yeah. at that. 
Did you all hear that? Did you hear that? We're running out of time here. Just think about that. It's like little ham hocks, but I'm telling you, it released that fat because we still love collard greens. Amen. Yes, we yes, like yes. food with soul in it. And and you know what? You know what? Like, people are going to hear this and they're going to say, well, you know what? I think that will work for me because it's not just a flavor, but I, I'm visual, aesthetic. I want to see the ham hock floating. Well, you can put the eggplant in there and you'll have something floating you around in there. Said we want to add some color some to our color. color. Yes. <laughs> well, our time has gotten away here today. You've been joined with us to talk about soul food. I hope this has been a blessing to you, and we look forward to seeing you on another From Sickness to Health. Thank you all very much. First Corinthians 10 and verse 31 says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Okay, I'm going to say something that sickness will love. Fried chicken tastes amazing. Now, now, before you say preach, brother, let's reason together. Fried foods, including chicken, are high in saturated fat. Saturated fat clogs arteries. Clogged arteries lead to a number of lifestyle diseases, etc. If you have to eat it for now, how about a healthier alternative, like baked chicken? But the best option is to go without it and to do what the Bible says, eat to the glory of God. For God wants us to honor him even in our eating. Ultimately, he is honored when we are healthy. This is confusing. Sometimes cooked meat or food is good and other times it's not. I'm confused. What do you mean? Well, in the Bible it says that Abel offered a lamb right. and God was pleased. Cain offered some fruits and vegetables and God was dishonored. Now you're saying that he wants fruits and vegetables and not soul food and I'm confused. No, 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 you are confused. Let me explain. We don't decide what we give the Lord. He does. He asked for a lamb from Cain and Abel. Cain decided what he wanted to give the Lord. But that lamb, listen, that lamb was being offered to God, represented Christ, the spotless lamb of God, who would honor God with his own body as a sacrifice for sin. Now, we are asked to do the same with ours. Let's give God what he asked for and avoid our own ideas about what he wants based on comforts and traditions. Well, that's our program, beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Present your body a living sacrifice. I'm Rico Hill. I'm Sickness. Maranatha. Oh man, this is my third surgery this year. This is crazy. What's up with these doctors? Oh, every time I come around, they're sharpening their knives. Guess this is what the Bible means by put a knife to your throat. But for me, it's my chest. Oh, gotta calm down. Breathe. Gotta calm down. Okay, I can do this. The surgeons will be with you in just a moment. The surgeons? That's a big knife. Is that a saw? Oh, it's a rusty saw. Oh, gotta calm down. Oh, gotta calm. Doc! Doc! Oh. 